For as long as I can remember, video game characters have always been in long-term monogamous relationships. Just look at how Sir Arthur is yet again saving Prin Prin in the newest Ghosts and Goblins game, Ken into Street Fighter 2 by getting married to Eliza, and despite a few dalliances with Daisy and Pauline, Mario has been with Princess Peach since the Reagan administration. But what about all those single heroes who aren't ready to settle down? Why don't we see more video game characters play in the field? That seems to be the premise of Sir Love a Lot, a new throwback action game starring a knight who is always looking for his next conquest, if you know what I mean. But is this passionate platformer a frolicking good time, or will it leave you unfulfilled? I spent a night with Sir Love a Lot, and this is what I found out. Sir Levelot is a simple man. He fights monsters, saves distressed damsels, and then immediately breaks their hearts. A pattern he repeats countless times as he travels across the dangerous fantasy world. The levels may get tougher and the obstacles are definitely deadlier, but that's not going to stop him from his carnal desire to bed every woman with long, climbable hair. It's true love. But at least until the sun comes up and he leaves for his next adventure. At its core, Sir Love a Lot is a mix between Super Meat Boy and Mega Man. On one hand, it's a tough and elaborate 2D platformer where you'll need to double jump and wall slide with pinpoint precision. On top of that, Sir Love a Lot is an exciting shooter where we use our gun to take out the many monsters that get in the way of the next one night stand. We'll need to use both the platforming and action elements to survive the increasingly difficult levels, pick up the all-important flowers, and then woo the damsels in distress. Obviously, this is not the first game to attempt this style of punishing 2D platformer, but Sir Levelot does it better than most. Each of the more than 40 stages is spread across multiple screens and are filled with secret areas to explore. In fact, a big part of this game involves searching for invisible paths that lead to geese that are laying collectible golden eggs, an idea the game keeps adding to the further you get. By the end of the game, you'll not only need to find flowers and eggs, but also coins, rings, and rare gems. And if you really want to beat the stage in style, all you need to do is beat it before the sun sets, or else you won't get the time bonus. Now, it's not just the collectibles that change and evolve over the course of the game, but also the obstacles. Sir Lovelot is split between four distinct parts of the map, with each introducing its own set of challenges and enemies. For example, one of the first new additions are swimming sections, which are later followed by levers and buttons you'll need to use in order to open up gates and unlock floating platforms. There's nothing especially groundbreaking here, but the game adds enough new from stage to stage to keep the momentum going for at least a few hours. And believe it or not, this is also a great platformer for anybody who is normally scared off by the genre's punishing difficulty. Sir Lovelot is great about checkpoints, which is already a departure from a lot of the Super Meat Boy wannabes. And it goes beyond just starting at the same screen where you died, because the game also remembers the enemies you killed, the items you picked up, and more. Every level is doable, though it may take some gamers a bunch of tries in order to reach the damsel's long and surprisingly strong hair. For those looking for a much tougher experience, there's a lot of incentive to complete the stage without even dying, something that gets a whole lot harder as we enter the second half of the adventure. No matter how you play it, though, I, I think that most people will agree that Sir Love a Lot is a gorgeous game. I love the detailed pixel graphics and the smooth animation. The first-time developer has found a way to make the normally boring caverns and castles burst with personality. It's in both the small and big touches, such as the subtle background changes and memorable enemy designs. You are a tiny character in a giant world, which only adds to the epic feel of the adventure. That said, a part of me wishes that the four worlds were a little bit more unique looking. Don't get me wrong, the stages look great, but they have this bad habit of blending together after a while. Sir Lovelot could have used a more extreme shift in color and tone from one area to the next. 
My other big complaint about the game, believe it or not, involves the gameplay. This is a game that demands great control in order to pull off the many precise platforming puzzles. Sir Lot has tight gameplay that more than gets the job done, but there's a catch. For whatever reason, you can't use the D-pad. Look, normally speaking, I'm not a fan of using the analog sticks to control 2D platformers, but it's fine here. I got used to it, even if it's not ideal. What's puzzling is why they wouldn't just give you the option since the D-pad goes unused throughout the entire adventure. It's the one thing that you want from this type of game, so I'm honestly a little shocked to see it missing. It's one of the very few things holding back what is otherwise a really great debut release from developer Pixel Games. Love em and leave em seems to be the motto for Sir Lovelot, the delightful new action platformer starring a brave knight with an unquenchable thirst. With its clever level designs, ever-changing obstacles, and stunningly detailed pixel graphics, you would never know that this is coming from a first-time developer. The result is a fun but challenging adventure that is not only a great platformer, but also an exciting Mega Man-style action game. The stylish presentation and tight gameplay make Sir Love a lot more than just another one night stand. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you What is your favorite video game relationship? No, it doesn't have to be romantic. I'm just gonna let you define that question as you see fit. Go ahead and let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back shortly with a look at the Ghosts and Goblins series through the eyes of Electronic Gaming Monthly, followed by a new Sir Arthur themed Game Over episode. Yeah, we have a lot of ghouls and ghosts to take care of this week. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.